Grace to you and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is good that we have gathered together for worship on this Pentecost Sunday, May the 31st. We are live premiering our service at 1030, both on YouTube and on Facebook. And I'm just grateful for all of you who've come and, and gathered together through these electronic means that we might have a community experience of worship together during these days. So let us know that you're here. Use the comments, use the emojis, use other means by which you might let one another know that we are gathered together for worship. Also be sure to greet those that you might not recognize, names that come up on your screen. Pass on a word of greeting to them as a part of the ways in which we extend our community of faith beyond our particular congregation to all those who join us through worship together today. One more way that I'd love for you to let us know that you're here, we have an online friendship pad that is now available on the church website, readchurchaugusta.org. It's right there at the top of the page. So click over there and uh, just answer those quick questions and let us know that you're worshiping with us together this morning. This replaces the friendship pads that we pass in the fuse when we're in the sanctuary. This gives us a chance to have a record of both members and guests and visitors who are with us so that we might be in touch with you. It's also a way that you can share your prayer requests with us. One of the questions on that friendship pad asks for any prayer requests that you might have. We ask that you would just share those with us, that we can be in prayer together with one another. There are many things for which we are praying, and we send out an email every Sunday afternoon with those particular prayer requests as we don't lift up those names through our video services. So do share those prayer requests, either through that online form, email me, or one of our other pastoral staff that, uh, that we might be in prayer with you during this time. It is through our prayers that we are knit together as the body of Christ. It is through these video services, other resources that you're available, that I hope that you're taking advantage of, that we continue to grow and be nurtured in our faith during this time. It allows us to do a couple things, one of which is to serve. We have a GAP ministry food collection this afternoon. Information about that was sent out in terms of the items that they're looking for. Uh, collection will be this afternoon from 2 to 5 p.m. behind the Allen Fuqua Center. So just drop by, drop off those canned goods, and uh, members of our youth and the GAP youth board, uh, who are members of our congregation, will be collecting those and taking them down to GAP so that we might be about a part of this ministry of, of feeding uh, for those who are hung hungry and homeless uh, in our community. Also, it allows us to gather in new and creative ways like Vacation Bible School. Tomorrow morning, Monday morning, will be day one for Vacation Bible School this year. It's a virtual online Vacation Bible School. The videos will be premiered and then there'll be activities to follow as well. So join us on the church Facebook page tomorrow morning, 9.30 a.m. so that you can be a part of Vacation Bible School. Tomorrow will also be the first day in phase one of our reopening of the church campus. That information was sent out to you on Wednesday and can be found online as well. Please be sure to read through those um, instructions and guidelines about how we might reopen the campus safely um, in a very small and limited way. Primarily it'll be through staff members being in the church office, so call ahead to make appointments if you'd like to come by and to see someone during this next week or two that are ahead. We do hope and pray that if conditions improve that we will be able to have a first in-person worship experience. It won't be a morning service, it'll be an evening service, 7 o'clock in the evening on Sunday, June the 14th. So watch more information about that as well. We will continue to share these pre-recorded video services every Sunday morning, even once we begin evening services. These will continue as our primary way of gathering our congregation for worship together until we're able to safely return to worship inside. I do ask that you would also continue your faithful generosity and giving. You have been such a gift to us as a congregation, it allowed us to continue to, to pay our church staff, to take care of all the other bills that continue to come in throughout all seasons of the year. Particularly, you've allowed us to be um, strong supporters of our mission partners, those who are working locally as well as regionally and nationally to alleviate particular needs that are pressing during this time. Thank you for your generosity that's allowed us to do so. 
Please continue to give either by mail or also you can use the Give Now button that's on the church website as well. It's also a part of the bulletin that's sent out to you each and every week. Thank you again for your generosity. This is an opportunity for us to say thank you to God for all the blessings that God has given us, particularly during this time. We know that God is present with us. We know that God's Spirit is poured out upon us as we have gathered together for worship on this Pentecost Sunday. So let us continue worship today with our first scripture reading. Our first reading for this Pentecost Sunday comes to us from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in our litany for Pentecost. Holy Spirit, Creator, in the beginning you moved over the waters. From your breath all creation drew life. Without you, life turns to dust. Ven, Espíritu Santo. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Counselor, by your inspiration the prophets spoke and acted in faith. You clothe them in power to be bearers of your word. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, power. You came as fire to Jesus' disciples. You gave them voice before the rulers of this world. Venez, Saint-Esprit. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Sanctifier, you created us as children of God. You make us the living temple of your presence. You intercede with sighs too deep for words. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, giver of life. You guide and make holy the church you create. You give gifts, the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, that the whole creation may be transformed. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Rain upon our dry and dusty lives. Wash away our sin and heal our wounded spirits. Kindle within us the fire of your love to burn away apathy. Loosen our tongues to show your praise. For only in your spirit can we voice your words of peace and proclaim Jesus as Lord. Amen. 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 Let us join together in our first hymn today, Spirit of the living God. of us, God has given a unique combination of gifts. In one way we show our love for God and one another is through the employment of those gifts in His service. When we misuse or neglect the blessings bestowed upon us, it is a form of transgression. So we come to ask for forgiveness, 
knowing that God will not only forgive, but will send his spirit to guide us down new paths as well. Let us pray first together and then in silence. As your spirit falls afresh on us, O God, we rejoice in the gifts you have given us. Yet we confess we do not always use them to glorify you. For using the gifts of your spirit for selfish gain instead of the common good, forgive us, O God. For thinking too little of ourselves and not trusting that you have given us gifts for your service, forgive us, O God. For believing some gifts to be better than others, ignoring how we each build up the body of Christ, forgive us, O God. Spirit of the living God, melt us, mold us, fill us, and use us so that our lives may glorify you. Amen. Friends, receive the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. We are lavished with his love. We are the beneficiaries of his grace and the recipient of his good gifts. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please pray with me. God of holy fire and world embracing grace, you come into all our locked rooms and fill us with your breathtaking love. Open our eyes to the enormity of your love for us and help us understand that with each of us, a spark of that love abides through your Holy Spirit. Let us be generous with our love, with our gifts, with our time. Let us be gentle and just and inclusive with our words. Let us be faithful and compassionate with our actions. Let us be wildly imaginative and hopeful with our dreams. Lord, this is a messy, broken world because we forget how to be your children. And we do not always seek your image in the eyes of our brothers and sisters. Today we weep with the lost and the lonely. We stand with the oppressed and raise our voices over the din of prejudice and violence and call for righteousness and justice to prevail for all people. 
Today in our prayer, we sit by the bedside of the sick and the dying. May they know our presence with them, even from afar, and may they know your presence with them close at hand. We pray for those in the midst of upheavals of job loss and financial instability. May they find level ground. We pray for the seekers who long to know you, Lord, and the wayward who have turned their backs. May they each find you and know they are welcomed. We pray for the churches that search for guidance when all the rules keep changing. Send them your wisdom and steadiness of heart. Surround us and keep us in the company of your saints, Lord, as we feel the breath of the Holy Spirit upon us just as they did. And may we celebrate our love for you in a thousand new ways in the days to come. So let us join our voices to bridge the distance between one another and to come as one voice before our God in prayer as we say the words taught to us by the Son. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning and welcome to worship. I am so glad to see you this morning. Today I brought a speaker that plays music. Do you have one of these or do your parents have one of these? I bet you at least your parents have one. Well, you know, if you want to play music, that your speaker has got to have a charge in order to have the power to do what it was created to do, which was to play music, right? This kind of reminds me of our Bible story today. See, before Jesus returned to heaven to be with his Father, he told the disciples something really special. He told them that they would have the power to do great things, even greater than he did. I find that hard to believe, don't you? Because Jesus did some pretty great things. Let's see, he healed the sick, he turned water into wine, he made the blind to see, and he made the lame to walk. Man, how would the disciples get to do all those great things and more? Ha, there was one thing that that Jesus promised to ask his Father to send the Holy Spirit to give the power that they need to the disciples. And on this day that we call Pentecost, The Bible tells us that there was this great sound like rushing wind that came through when all the disciples were gathered together. And they heard that sound and then something else really miraculous happened. They saw these flames of fire that sort of rested on them. And after this happened, the disciples had the power to do great things and they began to preach and teach all about Jesus and do miraculous things. Well, you know something else really cool? We have that power too. God has given us the Holy Spirit to be with us, to give us the power to do great things. Isn't that pretty awesome? I think so. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit so that we may do great things. Amen. Now I'd like you to exchange a greeting with your neighbor and pass the peace. Our second scripture reading for today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 23. Throughout the Easter season, we have been reading and preaching from the first letter of John. This morning, as the day of Pentecost brings our Easter season to a close, I think it's appropriate for us to return to John's account of the day of resurrection. As John records the Easter story, Mary Magdalene has gone to the tomb to weep 
for her crucified Lord. She finds the stone rolled away and the body gone, so she runs to tell the disciples. And two of those disciples, Peter and the unnamed disciple whom Jesus loves, run to the tomb to see for themselves. All they find are the grave clothes of Jesus, and so they return to their homes. But Mary remains weeping by the tomb, and there she encounters the risen Jesus, but she first mistakes him for the gardener. After Mary recognizes him when he calls her by name, Jesus sends Mary to the disciples with the good news of his resurrection. Well, the story continues with our text for today. On the evening of that first day of the week, the day of Jesus' resurrection, Easter Sunday, the disciples are gathered in a room with the doors locked. The atmosphere is not one of joy, as Mary's good news of resurrection is met instead with fear and apprehension. And it is into this room of fear and disbelief that Jesus appears again. So let us hear this word of God. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Now, Presbyterians have not always followed the liturgical calendar. So for churches like ours that now seek to organize our time and our worship around the liturgical church year, questions still arise. For example, there is the ever-present debate about the season of Advent and whether or not you can sing Christmas carols during the season of Advent. I suspect also that many of us still do not know what to expect on days like Trinity Sunday or Christ the King Sunday. And yet I have a hunch that we do know what to expect or have an idea anyway about Pentecost. Yes, Pentecost is the birthday of the church, the day on which the Holy Spirit comes on the disciples with great wind and tongues of fire and empowers them to proclaim the gospel in a variety of languages. It's all recorded for us, we know, in the second chapter of the book of the Acts of the Apostles. It's a dramatic text, one we can hold on to, one that we can visualize and remember. And that's how we begin our service of worship together today, right? With a visual, virtual Pentecost parade, all of us wearing red. We read that Acts text and then had the litany of Pentecost with members of our congregation sharing, Come Holy Spirit, in a variety of languages. And yet that's not our preaching text for today. Can it really be Pentecost if the preacher isn't preaching on the second chapter of Acts? Well, my friends, this is an unusual Pentecost. In fact, we know there's nothing usual and ordinary about these days. But I think that being dislocated and displaced on Pentecost actually provides us an opportunity it's an opportunity to consider a second text about the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yes, our text for today from the Gospel of John. Now, John's version of the gift of the Holy Spirit is not a huge public event. No, the disciples are huddled in fear. They're not anticipating anything, despite the fact that Jesus spent several chapters in the Gospel of John making them promises. 
making them promises, for example, like this, I will ask the Father and he will send you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth. Later, Jesus continues, I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. Yes, that was the promise. And just as he said, Jesus has gone away. But now on the third day, Jesus is back. Jesus stands among them. And the first thing he does is speak to them. Peace be with you. This is a traditional Jewish greeting. And yet it takes on significance when we remember that Jesus has promised his disciples peace. Then Jesus shows them his hands and his side. It really is him. It's not a ghost. He has returned just as he promised. And finally, Jesus says to them, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Here is the promised gift, the advocate, the spirit of truth who will teach them everything and remind them of all that Jesus has told them. Yes, do you see that in these short few verses, on the night of his resurrection, Jesus fulfills the promises that he's made to his disciples. Now remember, while it is evening, this is still resurrection day. And instead of waiting 50 days for the gift to come in the Gospel of John, this is resurrection day for the disciples, just as it is for Jesus. And this resurrection for them comes not with grand displays of sound and wind and tongues of fire. No, this new life comes. The promises of God are fulfilled in the words and the breath of the crucified and yet risen Son of God. On the day of resurrection, the breath that called creation into being. The breath that gave life to a creature crafted by hand by God from the dust of the earth. The breath that became flesh and lived among us full of grace and truth. This same breath, the Spirit of God, is now given to the disciples of Jesus. Think about that for a moment. Think about that as you and I take a breath. <sighs> that breath and each breath that we take throughout this worship service today fills us with the same spirit that Jesus breathed into those first disciples on the night of his resurrection as the disciples gathered in fear behind locked doors. The Spirit comes in those moments of fear. One of the most terrifying times in my own life occurred when I was probably eight or nine years old. In our backyard at the time, we had a wooden split rail fence. And one day I decided I was going to test my balance skills by walking across the top of that fence. My mom, my dad, my younger brother, they were all in the backyard at the time. Mom and dad were talking to a neighbor. My brother was playing on the swing set. Well, I was about halfway down the length of that fence when I lost my balance. I fell forward, falling so my chest landed first right on top of a fence post. With the wind completely knocked out of me, I lay on the ground, unable to breathe or even cry for help. I do not remember which of my family members turned first, saw me lying on the ground on the other side of the fence and rushed to my aid. However, I do vividly recall the few seconds, they felt like hours, when I was without a breath. My friends, on this unusual Pentecost Sunday, we too are gathered in our homes. 
We're not quite sure whether it's safe or not to venture outside. We fear what might be lingering in the air we breathe. We feel like getting back to, quote, normal is elusive, a goal that may never happen. We feel like the wind has been knocked out of our lungs. So on this day, I want to encourage us to think of this Pentecost as a collective deep breath in. Jesus standing among us, greeting us with peace, breathing on us, saying, receive the Holy Spirit. This is not a question. It's not a possibility. It's not a request that could be accepted or not. No, receive the Holy Spirit. It's a command. It's a gift. Receive the Holy Spirit. Take a deep breath. Be filled with the very breath of God. And do not be afraid. Because with that breath, with that gift, comes a vocation. Just as the Father has sent Jesus, so now he sends us. This week, we've been vividly reminded again of the fragility of the breath of life. Even more, throughout this entire pandemic, we've seen the virus attacking lungs and breath. But we are the church. We are those filled with the breath of God. And with the power in our lungs, we have been sent. We've been dispersed into this world to bear witness to the fact that it is nothing less than the word and the breath of God that brings life where there was none before. Without the word and the breath of God, life cannot be sustained. Without the word and the breath of God, the church merely huddles behind locked doors of buildings in fear. But on this day, my friends, receive the Holy Spirit. Breathe in and breathe out. Yes, breathe in and breathe out. You are filled with the breath of God. Do not be afraid. Christ's promises are trustworthy and true. You have been empowered with gifts to serve, with words to speak, with the love of Christ to share, with a world that is in desperate need of grace and peace and forgiveness and love. Ministry does not have to be big and flashy, loud and extravagant. No, all you need is the spirit of our crucified and yet risen Lord who brings new life to you and to me and to all the world, one breath at a time. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, pour forth your spirit upon us. Fill us with your breath. Not the breath we take on our own, not the strength we think we have on our own, but the breath that comes from you, that convinces and reminds us that the promises you make to us are trustworthy and true. So we do not need to be afraid. We can proclaim the good news of the gospel to all we meet, wherever we may be, wherever we might go, until such time that we might be gathered together again. We put our trust and our faith in you, O Lord, that you will fill us this day. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. My friends, in response to hearing scripture read and proclaimed, let us declare what it is that we believe. Today we use words adapted from the Confession of 1967. God the Holy Spirit fulfills the work of reconciliation in human life. The Holy Spirit creates and renews the church as a community in which people are reconciled to God and one another. The Spirit enables people to for receive forgiveness as they forgive one another and to enjoy the peace of God as they make peace among themselves. In spite of their sin, the Spirit gives people power to become representatives of Jesus Christ and his gospel 
of reconciliation to all. Let us join our hearts, our minds, our voices together as we sing our closing hymn, We Are One in the Spirit. My friends, as we conclude our service today, breathe in and breathe out. Be filled with the Holy Spirit, the very breath of God that Jesus shared first with those disciples on the evening of his resurrection, that transformed them from those who were afraid to those empowered to continue Christ's ministry, sharing good news of love and joy and peace and forgiveness. May we join in that ministry today, wherever we may be, wherever we may go, knowing that Christ's promises to us are trustworthy and true. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Father, Son.